here today with Martin Blunos at the Blunos in Bath, a newly opened fish restaurant. And we're going to talk to him today about plans in the future to release a cookbook and also about the advice that he'd give to aspiring chefs who want to get into the industry and how they should go about it. You've recently opened the restaurant 16 weeks ago. 16 weeks, yeah, it's not long, not long. And what's the sort of general gist behind it? What are you aiming? Um, I think it's just trying to bring something different to Bath. We, we, Bath is full of restaurants. And if you look at that, that list of restaurants, there's one or two fish restaurants and not purely fish. But this place is purely fish. Mm. We're an island, you think about it. We are uh, any furthest point from the sea on this island of ours, the UK, is 80 miles. We're surrounded by water. We should be eating a lot more fish. Yeah. And I think getting to a certain age, as I have, um, it's about health. And fish is good for you, it's easy to digest, uh, it's pretty sustainable um, if, we're, you know, if we're careful how we fish it. Um, and it kind of makes sense to. to to, to do it. Because this is sort of very pick and, pick and mix. Yeah, it's tapas. I don't want to say tapas, because tapas... It's not tapas. Yeah, not tapas. <laughs> um, because it, it becomes then very sort of categorised. You go, oh, well, that's going to be a bit of chorizo, it's going to be some olives, it's going to be this. Um, and it's not that at all. What it is, it's small plates and big plates. Okay. Trying to get away from starters, main course and sweet, it's it's what you want. I mean, you, you might come in, you're not really peckish, you have a glass of champagne, you've got the oysters. Anything actually, you've got the munchies now, rather than a glass of champagne. The thing is, you only came in for one drink and a couple of oysters. The secret and the trick is, is that you leave having had a bottle of champagne and maybe three or four plates. You don't feel you've been fleeced and I've made money. Everybody comes in and they see the fish and then they see the specials, and even that are written on the menu, and then they get taken to the table. That, as you get older, you kind of realise it's a bit like maturity. I think maybe as you grow older, you, you kind of, things slow down and you realise it's not what you put into a dish, it's the bits you leave out that make the dish. They like music, composers, it's not the notes that they put in, it's the ones they don't, the gaps that make the tune. Um, and as a young buck, you learn all these skills and techniques and you want to put everything on that plate because that's your frame, that's your, you're the artist. There's your frame is the plate, you bung it all on, everything you know and you want to show off and then it goes out to the customer and go, wow. And it's a bit of confusion going on because there's too much. Mm. And the hardest thing, if you think about it, is to put less on the plate and, and there's nowhere to hide. Instead of it being confusion, it becomes a fusion of a great starch, a lovely potato dish, with a great green, a nice bit of kale or something, a lovely protein, a piece of fish, an amazing sauce. Those four elements, there's nowhere to hide. But you've chosen to take a different path, given that you awarded two Michelin stars, you've decided now that it's a different phase and that you want to concentrate on. And also, of course, you're back in Bath, which is home for you, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I think, for, first and foremost, nice to be back home. Mm. Uh, it's my city, uh, I'm known here. And that's nice, because there's a lot of old customers from when I had the two-star restaurant. But it's a different world we're in now. It's a nasty world out there, you know. So when people come in, you want them to have fun. And that's getting away from the formality. We haven't got tablecloths, I haven't got a sommelier, we haven't got lots of flunkies waltzing around, uh, I don't do tasting menus. I think that now it's about having fun. Um, and actually, keep it simple, enjoy what you're doing, and after all it's a business, make some money. Mm. If they feel they can come into to this place without having to put a suit and tie on, where they can just look at the watch and go, actually, what we, ah, tell you what, forget cooking, let's just pop down to the restaurant. Mm. Um, and spend a few quid, or actually just have a blowout and spend a, a lot, a lot of money, you know. So, but yeah, it's changed direction because that, that, it's almost like, you know, the Hollywood actors that, that say, oh, you know, the Oscars are rubbish. What a, what a waste of time. It's all just uh, hype, 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 until they get one. Cool. Now it's all cool. Mm -hmm. Now you're in the club. So it's a bit like me, I know, two Michelin stars. When we had them, there was 11 in the country, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know, in the whole of the UK, there was 11 and we were one of them. Um, and. It's nice to, to say, well, I've been there, seen it, done it, got the t-shirt. Mm. And now well, you're under no pressure to, you know... Ticks it, it off. Ticked it off. <laughs> does it pay the bills? Does it make you lots of money? Not necessarily. Mm. So now it's about having a bit of, bit of fun and enjoying it. Do you still do a lot of experimenting at home? I'm not really allowed to because I make just a mess. Here, it's great. I can make the mess, I move along, I turn around, someone cleans it up, the mess. Heaven. Heaven. I have this like revolving kitchen, I just run out, of, I move across the, the work surfaces and I come back and start again. <laughs> at home, I just run out of work surface, turn around and say, I can't work in this rubbish. Look at the mess. I can't, I can't work in this. <laughs> so then I get kicked out of the kitchen. Do you like other people cooking for you a lot? Uh, yeah, but they don't. 
They don't. don't. See, honestly, that's the thing. I think it'd be very stressful to cook for a chef like you. I think it, you'd, you'd be, you know, you'd, you'd say it was took me seconds, but I'd be there all day long slaving away in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, but I, that's the, 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 the thing is, it was, we're very humble people. I mean, for me, a baked sandwich is amazing in the morning. That's a classic. Yeah, but uh, brown sauce or red? Mmm, brown. Oh, please. <laughs> Browns for sausages. It's got to be red on a bacon sandwich. Do you have a favourite cuisine? I quite like, I mean, well, I've got to say that, I suppose, because of Eastern European background, but I quite like the Russian or Eastern European, the, the, the strong, earthy um, sauerkraut. It's a great one. Sauerkraut in the winter time is lovely, warming. Uh, beetroot, not beetroot, caraway, rye bread, heavy, dense, um, strong flavours, mainly because that's what I was brought up on. Do you have any plans to release a cookbook? I've got a synopsis for a book, uh, Baltic Lunos, again, going back to my roots, which is all foods I was brought up on, because no one's really done. Eastern Europe, and I think there's this assumption that it's all boiled potatoes, sauerkraut, sausages. Well, it is that, but there's a lot more to it, especially Latvia, being a pagan. Uh, they would worship tangible things like the sun. The sun comes up, it's warm, makes you feel good, things grow. God, that's important. Let's worship the sun, you know, until religion came in, and then it all kind of changed. But they would have festivals around. You know, harvest festival, longest day, shortest day, hottest day, any day, they would have a festival. And that all involved drink and food. Um, and I, so I did this synopsis about uh, Baltic Blue Knots because obviously the name, the Baltic thing, a lot of chefs, you know, you get into it because of the cooking and then you, you want the restaurant. And then there's this legacy thing of, of if you have a book, that will be on a shelf somewhere and you're gone. You're long gone. Permanent. And it's permanent, mm. it's there as a record. Um, all of your achievements and that, that's documented somewhere, but a book is there. And you've had input into that. Mm. You've seen it, you've helped build it, to write it, to help with the edit, the pictures in it, and it's a bit of you. Do you have any advice for young chefs, people that want to get into the industry? Is it a really tough industry, do you think? Yeah, I think so, and it's, we're struggling to find um, quality staff at the moment. It's, it's an employee's uh, world at the moment. Um, I think there's a, a lot to be said for telly because uh, the TV actually shows a different picture. You know, a lot of youngsters coming into it think that that's what they'll be like and it isn't. It's, it's tough old life. And I think that if you can stick it out, you can travel the world and get paid to do a job. Because if you can handle a knife, you can go into any country, it doesn't matter about the language, and you can be shown a physical task, and you will master that task. And then you become an asset to that business, that kitchen, that chef. Uh, then the more you learn and, and pick it up, then you get more responsibility. Then you build as a person, you get stronger. If you're gonna come into this business, stick at it, try and do work experience in, in, in different areas. Catering, you know, fine dining restaurant, to a hotel, to industrial catering because actually you might find one is more enjoyable than the other. Mm. It's very easy to go, oh, no. Oh, no, I, oh, I got shouted at today, no, I, I'm not having that. Mm. I don't know, what, you know, is the grass always greener? You keep jumping from thing to thing to thing, and then you end up doing nothing. Absolutely lovely to speak to Martin. Uh, he seems really happy here. He's obviously taken a different path. He's much more into uh, making sure that people are having a brilliant time sitting around a table and just enjoying food.